Welcome to Current Affairs on JTV, the global Jewish channel. I'm here today with uh, Zach Goldsmith, the Conservative mayoral candidate for the London mayoral elections. Uh, Zach, thank you for joining me. Um, I'd like to thank firstly you. ask, mayoral elections coming very quickly, um, what's your message for JTV's viewers? First of all, thanks for having me on JTV. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, a great new initiative. Uh, my message to the Jewish community is exactly the same as a message to everyone else. At its core, it's about an action plan for London that will solve the housing crisis by upping the number of homes we build to 50,000 a year, enabling Londoners earning average incomes to get on the housing ladder. It's about growing the transport network, keep London moving and growing. It's also about security. And this is an issue that matters perhaps more to your audience than some other audiences. But it matters to everyone. There is a, there, it is a fact that London is a target. It is a fact that the threat levels are very high. And it is also the fact that crime levels are, have been on the increase in the last few months. So uh, London needs a mayor who's going to give the police the backing and the tools and the resources they need to keep us safe. And they need to know that whoever is in City Hall is on their side. If I'm elected on May the 5th, they'll know that I'm on their side. Also the environment. I have to add the environment because it, 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 this is an issue that's gone shooting up the agenda. And I, I am determined to make London the cleanest and greenest city in the world. And I know that we have the tools uh, to achieve that. Well, I like the, uh, the universalist message there. Um, your main opponent, Sadiq Khan, has accused you of negative campaigning. He says you're looking to mm. divide uh, Londoners with your rhetoric. I don't know how you respond to that. Well, it, look, it is nonsense. Clearly, my, my, my message is overwhelmingly a positive one. And I really enjoyed getting out and about every corner of London with that message. And the more people hear it, the more people join my campaign. That's why the momentum is with my campaign. Um, but I, I, I've said, uh, you know, what, I think I've said what I need to say about Sadiq Khan, except that I don't think it's ever acceptable for a politician to attempt to close down a debate or close down legitimate questions um, by throwing around terms like Islamophobia. And I, that's why I've reacted to the accusations that have been put to me by Sadiq Khan. I did so emphatically earlier on in the week, and I think I can probably draw a line under it now. Well, but do you think Sadiq Khan has answered your points about extremism? I, I, no, to be honest, I don't think he has. I think there are, you know, th but this is not... Just to be clear, I, I have never accused Sadiq Khan of being um, no, extremist or having extremist views, and I don't think any serious commentator has. The, the questions that have been raised by me, by newspapers, by Londoners, and by many others relate to his judgment, having shared a platform and given oxygen, even given cover to people who do have extremist views on so many occasions, uh, it, 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 10, 15, 20, 30 occasions. And I think that does put a question mark over his judgment. Somebody who wants to be the mayor of the greatest city in the world, somebody he wants to be effectively in charge of our police and security, I do believe that it's legitimate to ask those questions and I think he has an obligation to answer them. But it is for him now to do that, not me. Okay. Um, what, I think one of the key things that Londoners always mm. feel quite uh, impassioned about is a need for um, social integration. Mm. Uh, and that's ethnic integration, religious integration in that line. Absolutely. What, what do you say positive on that score? What, what will you do we're, to improve uh, cohesion in the capital? We, we are lucky. At the moment, we're lucky in London. We are one of the most diverse cities in the world. Um, we are, broadly speaking, a harmonious city. Um, I think one of the reasons we're the greatest city in the world is because of that diversity and because our different groups get on well together. You, just across the water in Paris, you've got a beautiful city, magnificent architecture, but it is a divided city. And you've got ghettos with one group of people. You've got Jewish families now packing their bags and leaving, thousands of them leaving France because they no longer feel that Paris is a safe place for them to be. That is an appallingly depressing uh, prospect, but it's happening. Those families must be going through some of the same thoughts that their uh, uh, you know, predecessors in Europe went through in the 20s and 30s in, in, in various parts of Europe. And it is something that we need to guard against. I don't believe that we can ever take for granted the harmony we have in London. And one of the jobs of the mayor, and this is a hard power thing, it's also a soft power thing, is to protect that diversity, to stand up for that diversity, but also to ensure that we never take the harmony we have in London for granted. A mayor has to stand for all of Londoners, not just one segment. It has to be a, a mayor for all of London. Uh, one of the key things that our uh, viewers are often uh, concerned about is the BDS movement, yeah. uh, the campaign, if you like, to boycott Israel, accuse it of being an apartheid state. Now, I don't want to go back to Sadiq Khan, but when he was a minister, he campaigned for this. Yeah. Uh, he now says he's against it. So what's your stance? This is, I mean, look, that's the problem in politics, is you can, you know, it's, it's why voters increasingly choose not to judge politicians purely on their promises. You look at the record as well. You can make any number of promises, but you can't escape your record. Um, and I think Sadiq Khan has yet to explain the, the, this, the change in his position on BDS. My, my view is that, that, that Israel is one of the most 
extraordinary countries on earth. It is the only democracy in an area of, of the world where there is no true democracy besides Israel. It is a little shining light in an otherwise dark part of the world. And I think we should be doing everything we can to strengthen our relationships. I think Boris has done that um, up to a point. He's been a good mayor and he's helped to improve that bridge between London and Tel Aviv, for example. And that's something I would certainly look forward to doing. I think BDS has in part become a cover for something else. I know as an MP, having been lobbied incessantly by people who are promoting BDS, that it's not always about Israel, that, that BDS has become an excuse for a much older form of hatred. And I think we need to guard against that. What does London look like two years after you're elected? I want London to be the greenest city in the world. We can do that very, very quickly. I want London to continue to be a harmonious city. I want Londoners to, to believe that they're going to be able to get on the housing ladder, which it's a, it's a remote thought for most people today, given how, how, how mad the housing market is in London. I want people to, 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 to be able to strive to get the keys to their first home. And I want London to keep moving. And your final message, specifically for Jewish Londoners, why should they vote for you? I think for Jewish Londoners, putting aside all the issues that we all have in common, I, there is a real sense of anxiety in London among the Jewish communities. I know this from quite a few public meetings that I've done. I'm doing another one later on today. I know security will come up. People are concerned. People look at what's happened in France and they're frightened that that might happen in London. So for London's Jewish communities, I would simply say I will give the police everything they need to keep us safe. I will use every lever at my disposal to ensure that no one ever feels the need or to even question whether they have a future in London. That will not happen on my watch. But to tie into that very quickly, um, you will be aware the main cause of anti-Semitism today is actually Muslim anti-Semitism mm -hmm. against Jews. How yeah. do you resolve that very tricky um, balance between two yeah. communities in the city? And, and you've put your finger on it. It's not just a policing issue. I mean, the, the police do need to be able to keep us safe, and I will make sure they can. But there are problems with homegrown terror, homegrown extremism. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the challenge is to find a way to isolate the people who mean us harm but without the whole community feeling isolated. If, if the latter happens, then it's the wrong policy and it will fail. And we'll find that even more people move in the wrong direction. And I think a lot of that must come from working with the community itself, enabling the community to police itself, enabling the community almost like a human body to develop the immune system it needs to keep those people out who are not only misrepresenting the true, uh, uh, um, uh, true Islam, but who are also putting at risk London and social cohesion generally. Zach Goldsmith, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for joining us at Current Affairs on JTV.